the Raspberry Pi Foundation, the nonprofit behind uh, the, the platform, announced that they sold 3 million units. Um, and it's not just used strictly in an academic setting, although that is its main purpose. Uh, it's also used by makers uh, everywhere. And with the recent announcement of the compute module, uh, it will also be used for uh, uh, product makers to integrate into their products. So uh, that's really neat. And to talk about this more, I'd like to invite on stage James Adams, Raspberry Pi's Director of Hardware Engineering. Well, uh, put some props on the floor. There you go. Yeah, there we go. yeah, that's good. That's okay on the floor. <laughs> uh, so, uh, first of all, welcome to New York and welcome to Thank MakerCon. You very much. First time in New York. Yeah, welcome. That's great. Pretty excited. Thank you very much. <laughs> if, you have any, if you have any tips for New York City, uh, things to see, send them to James after the presentation. Um, first of all, tell me about uh, what you do for Raspberry Pi. So I'm uh, director of hardware engineering. I joined Raspberry Pi basically a year after sort of the first units went on sale. Um, that was back at the start of 2013. Um, at that point, what had happened was Raspberry Pi was started by a group of volunteers in Cambridge, including Evan Upton, whoever most people associate, uh, you know, he, he's the face of Raspberry Pi, kind of. But it was a group of people, all, all volunteers in their spare time. The board, the, the, the Raspberry Pi was built, the first versions, manufactured, you know, uh, you know, and then some money came in. Um, it was a great success, and then they realized they needed to actually employ some full-time engineers to take this thing forward because, you know, it was such a, such a success, and the original guys who were, had founded it, they just didn't have time to do all the engineering and the manage the manufacturing and, you know, look after future products. Um, so at the point I joined, uh, I have a kind of a partner, um, Gordon Hollingworth. He's director of software engineering, and we have a few engineers, and we call on some contractors, um, but we're a small team. Uh, but that's what I do. I kind of manage the hardware side of the of things, um, the, the sort of building, you know, everyday building and, and, and component selection and uh, design of uh, the new products. Um, so, yeah, that's what I do. Uh, great. Great. Now, we, as I mentioned, the Raspberry Pi is really first and foremost an educational and academic platform for experimentation with computers. But I think anyone who's going to be at Maker Faire this weekend will see that I mean, it's a it's a, a maker's tool also, and it's it's become that. Are there any other surprising uses for Raspberry Pi that you've seen? Um, surprising uses, I think. One of the, my favorite uses is um, a guy called Dave Aikman put, putting the Raspberry Pi um, up uh, on a a, um, a weather balloon uh, up into up into near space, um, and he's used. I mean, the Raspberry Pi. Um, it's built on mobile technology. There are add-ins that we sell. One of the add-ins is a camera module, which is basically based on a mobile phone camera, a cheap module that you can plug into one of the connectors. And he used the Raspberry Pi and the camera. Uh, he set the software up to sort of record the camera as, as the balloon went up. Um, and, um, and then he had a radio that he'd attached to the Raspberry Pi via the sort of um, the, uh, the pins of the Raspberry Pi to send telemetry uh, so he could track the balloon. And, and sent, sent some images down, and then when he picked the thing up, uh, he could take the, the video off this thing. And he's got great videos of this balloon going up into the stratosphere. Uh, and in fact, he, he's done a few launches like this. Uh, and um, I think the most famous one, if anyone's seen it on the web, is the one where he takes the Raspberry Pi mascot, which is a little bear called Babbage, mm -hmm. and he's uh, sort of recreated Felix Baumgartner's jump from sort of 39 kilometers up in the sky, uh, and has, has a picture of this bear kind of jumping off <laughs> his little little foam platform that he's built, which is you know, brilliant. That's my favorite. Um, as for other things, we've just seen it go into so many different things. Uh, it really is a maker's tool. In fact, you know, the sort of, that's one of the big markets, you know, uh, and it's great. You know, as, as you say, you know, the foundation is created to educate children, and that's our core mission. But you know, we'll sell a Raspberry Pi to any, anyone who wants one, and mm -hmm. we'd love to see what people do with them. So, um, so yeah. Now, when I, when I talk about Raspberry Pi to people and I explain it to people, I say the best feature of Raspberry Pi is its price, $35. Now, when you're working with it as a piece of hardware and you have to keep things within that $35 price and you've you got to think of all the components that are on there, and you have experience working with building and developing hardware, is it more challenging than uh, you know, working on other things to keep that price down when you're developing it? So It's an interesting question and one that um, you know, affects me on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, traditionally in my career I've worked on very high-tech, very kind of low volume, price and sensitive type things. So going to Raspberry Pi was a real um, sort of leap from that to, uh, I guess, sort of 
almost a bit lower tech, um, but very high volume. Um, we're building to this price point, uh, and it is a it is a challenge. Um, you know, we want to keep the price point. We do believe it's a very strong uh, thing for to both demand, but also because of the educational mission. We don't want to, to make these things expensive. Um, so yeah, we we spent a long time talking to suppliers. I mean, it's, it has got a lot easier now. Uh, initially, when the first units were built, it was a lot of goodwill because it's a charity. We talked to all the suppliers. They gave us good prices based on, you know, you're doing a good thing, guys. Um, you know, we'll give you a volume price for this resistor, whatever it was. Um, now we're into the three and a half, four million sort of territory of units sold. It's a lot easier to, you know, it's kind of a self sort of perpetuating commercial entity now. You know, it's, it's kind of viable as a business, even though we're obviously a charity. But it's still, you know, we're still on a day-to-day -day basis, or I'm still kind of talking to guys to try and get costs down on this and that. Um, so this product, uh, this is a Raspberry Pi Model B+. Plus. Um, this is the third Raspberry Pi um, sort of version. This is the one that I kind of designed um, to supersede the two, sort of the old ones. And this one actually turns out to be very slightly cheaper to manufacture than the previous ones, mostly due to the work we've done to sort of get supply chain um, pr uh, things cheaper. Um, and this is kind of what we want to do, is we want to work on the price and also then build things which have more features. Um, or we can you know, try and give that uh, saving back to the, to the guys who are buying it, not necessarily you know, take, uh, take any more money out of, you know, of the unit cost for ourselves. Um, so yeah, day to day, I you know I get emails from from suppliers and and things, and we, we sort of have a, a good background chat all the time about different components and costs and things. So. Can you talk about what some of the new features are on the Raspberry Pi Model B Plus, and you know how it represents you know the the evolving how, how Raspberry Pi has evolved and maybe where it's going towards. So I think there was a step change from the sort of the initial foundation volunteer effort to the now there's paid engineers uh, you know we we do you know we do focus a lot on um, building great products um, and we test you know th this one was well tested and we did several prototypes uh, we kind of knew where we were going and we, we had guys spending full time you know working on it um, and the B plus so what's great about the B plus is we've kind of listened to the community we've added all the features of the original board that people kind of said you know, this would be nice. So we've got we've got four four mounting holes. We've got four USB ports instead of two USB ports. Um, we've kind of tidied up the port layout so it's it's easier and nicer to case. We've added extra GPO for sort of um, adding extra sensors and things to the Pi. Uh, and we've also created a, a spec for adding plug-in boards. Oh yeah, we which, can show that. Let me which have. Um, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a minute. Um, so basically, it's a it's a it's a evolution, not revolution. It uses the same processor, but the great thing about that is there's a huge amount of effort that's gone into, invested into the software side of things. Um, if you look at the software from the original days, and now it's much faster, it's much better. We've spent a lot of time in engineering improving improving that. Uh, so it's a platform we want to keep around for a long time, rather than have to throw the software away and start with something new. What does the Raspberry Pi of the future look like? So I think the Raspberry Pi of the future will look like a credit card size, credit card size computer. It probably will be recognizable as, as a Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm sure. I mean, there will be future versions. Um, who knows what they'll be? Um, we have this price point to keep to, which does right. make it very difficult. Um, you know, there, there's not really anything out in the market that will allow us to build a, a more powerful pie for the same price at the moment. But you know, that will change, I'm sure. Um, as standards evolve, mm -hmm. you know, connectors may change. But I, I, I kind of think, you know, low power, very cheap. Um, this kind of standard USB or, or whatever USB becomes, um, and plug it into your TV kind of style will hopefully, you know, still be present in Raspberry Pi 10 or whatever it will be. <laughs> Great. Now you meant you mentioned this already, and I want to talk about it a little more a little bit more. So Arduino has shields, BeagleBone has capes, and now Raspberry Pi has. So we have hats. Hats, um, right? You have a picture of that. <laughs> uh, so this this is the name I came up with. Uh, one of our engineers, Jonathan, he really wanted to call them hats, uh, and just just because he thought that was kind of cute. So, <laughs> so then we decided they were called hard, hardware attached on top. Okay, H A T. Hat. It's different from yeah yeah you know, different from everybody else. But you know we see the well, certainly I you know within the engineering team and, and in Pi we kind of slowly came to this realization that a standard is very valuable. Um, the B plus gives you these kind of four mounting holes. 
Uh, so you can have a really nice solid attachment to these sort of squarish style boards. So we, we decided to build a spec based on that. The other thing we wanted to fix was the fact that on the original Raspberry Pi models, uh, you can plug stuff in, but then you have to do you know you have to load the drivers and you have to kind of have right. a note, understand the hardware and you know there's a bit of a learning curve. So these hats now have the ability to automatically configure themselves. So much like Beagleware and Black, they've got a, a um, an EEPROM on board with information that the Raspberry Pi will interrogate boot time and set the drivers up, set the pins up. So and so for people who aren't already familiar with these sort of hardware expansion boards, can you talk about what you expect people to be able to like snap on top? What kind of hats would be available? Um, so we've seen we've seen quite a few already. So there's one in in the in the image here. This is I think it's from IQ Audio. So this is just an audio output hat. Um, the Pi has audio output, but it's not super hi-fi output. Uh, these guys have built a hat that has a, a really high quality DAC on it um, and headphone driver. Um, so that you know you'd take this hat, you'd snap it on the Pi, you'd boot the Pi up, um, and it would just work. That's kind of the idea. I mean we've still got a little bit of work to do on the software, but you know it's it's all coming soon. Um, so what other hats are there? I think anything, oh, you know, motor controllers, mm -hmm. uh, digital to analog, analog to digital displays, Pimeroni, um, have a, a bunch of hats in the works, you know, um, anything you've seen attached to the Pi, you know, can be turned into a hat and, and become a, an easier to use thing. I mean, it's, it's primarily for the, for the markets where you don't want to give people this learning curve, the, t the teachers and the, even the guys who are starting out in making and things, you know, just... Just just drop the level of the of the sort of learning curve a bit to get people on board. It makes life easier for everyone. Right. Now the uh, changing gears a little bit. I, I Raspberry Pi is more than just hardware. I, I think one of the strongest parts of Raspberry Pi is the software that supports it, and there's been a huge amount of uh, development behind it. Can you talk a little bit? You know, you, you see it from a hardware perspective, but you you I mean, can you talk a little bit about how software plays a role in what you do? Um, so I'm constantly talking to the software guys. Yeah. I, I'll freely admit that I don't know everything that's going on in the software world, um, but pretty much most things. Uh, you know, we we work very well as a team, Gordon and I and Eben and you know the other the other guys. Uh, we discuss what we're going to do. Um, you know, obviously this hardware has an impact on the software right. from the, the hat spec. Um, but what I will say about the, sort of the software and the pie in general, so we touched on it already, is that it's constantly evolving. We've constantly, you know, we're always working on it. We either work on it internally or we, we have contractors. Um, mm -hmm. It's, you know, we're always improving things. There's been a, there's been a lot of low-hanging fruit to improve performance and memory efficiency and all the rest of it. You know, it's, if you look at it, you know, it, it's quite a, a powerful platform, even though it's a low-power, cheap platform. You know, it's all about the software. And at the moment, you know, there's still a lot we can do to improve the software and the speed. Um, we're kind of on it on as many fronts as we can in terms of um, engineering, uh, but it does take time. Right. Now, before we uh, have to wrap up here, I, w I wanted to talk about the compute module, the, a new piece of hardware that was released. Can you tell us about what, what the compute module is all about? So we should have a yeah, there. slide. Okay, so the compute module is, so we saw a lot of people building Raspberry Pis into, into physical things, into, you know, consumer products. Um, and Certainly, this is the thing that I really wanted to do when it came to Raspberry Pi. I, I kind of already had the idea that this would be a great thing to build to allow sort of people to leverage the Raspberry Pi software stack and hardware at a cheap price into consumer products. Um, so the, the, the compute module is a sodium, a laptop sodium size module with the Raspberry Pi processor memory and uh, instead of an SD card, it's got what's called the MMC flash, which is uh, flash memory. Um, and you can basically build a, a cheap carrier board, uh, put your sodium cheap socket on, buy the Raspberry Pi compute module, plug it in, and you can you, know, you can build things with Raspberry Pi technology in them uh, fairly cheaply. And the other thing we've done with this is we've kind of people can get to the asymptotic price of a compute module, which is thirty dollars, quickly in you know units of a hundred. You don't have to buy ten thousand of these. You know we're lever we're leveraging the fact that we can buy the processor and memory and the flash. Cheaply because we buy in volume, and we're trying to pass as much on, you know, to people uh, as we can. So that you know, if you go out and try and buy these yourself, either you won't be able to, or you'll you'll have to you'd be charged a high price. But we we want to put this technology in people's hands um, and see what they do with it. The other, I guess, the other thing to note about the compute module is there are more interfaces. It exposes all the interfaces to this Raspberry Pi processor. Mm -hmm. um, 
as compared to the Model B, where it's you know you, you kind of get what you're given. So there's a, there's more flexibility for you know two two cameras, more displays, more I/O. Um, yeah, so we're going to be interested to see what people do with it. Uh, and we already we've seen I've been doing a lot of research about it. I've seen three Kickstarters that use the compute module, um, auto the hackable camera, and uh, Slice, which you're also working on. Can you tell yes. us what Slice is? Okay, so Slice is a, a, a an XBMT media center based around the compute module. Uh, it, I got involved, um, it's, I, I was kind of asked, uh, uh, myself and Gordon at Raspberry Pi were asked to get involved, initially just as sort of, um, sort of to help fund and advise on the project, but we, we pretty much soon learned that the guys needed some help with hardware and software. Um, so we got involved with this, this project to build a consumer product around, around the compute module, um, okayed it with the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and actually what it's turned out to be is a great lesson for us as Raspberry Pi right. in what we need to do to make the compute module software, you know, hardware, what we need to do to make it a viable thing for people to take into commercial products. So we've, with Slice, we've done a lot of, um, oh, there's actually a slide with a picture oh, yeah, as sure. well, I think. Um, so this is Slice. Um, we found, you know, we found software issues that we've fixed. Mm -hmm. We've, you know, we've, we've um, it's documentation, you know, quite a, a host of things. And we're going to take this thing to manufacture, and there's there's some sort of manufacturing issues as well about how people load the thing with software, and you know when you're building units and, and sort of you know test test the board and all of it. So it's kind of it's been a really good experience from both sides. Um, we've got a Kickstarter going. We're going to make a few thousand units, and we're going to see where it goes. And um, great, it's been fun to be involved. Now the. Uh, there, there have been Linux on modules before, and we've talked about this, that this isn't a new thing. This Linux, isn't a new idea. Right, but what, what, what do you think sets the Raspberry Pi compute module apart from anything that's been out there in the past? So I think it's partly price, because it's $30. Right. It's a pretty low price for, for what you get on the module. Um, and I think the big thing is you can leverage the Raspberry Pi software stack. And you can also use a Raspberry Pi to prototype your product right. uh, and then just migrate it to hardware once you've, kind of, you know, you've got to the point where you know what you want. So the auto camera is a perfect example. They had a Raspberry Pi in a box, and they did a few prototypes, and they attached the camera and all the rest of it. And they basically had the working thing with the Raspberry Pi and a camera. And then all they needed to do was create you know, the, the smaller board with the compute module into a physical, into the right physical form factor. And, and, and there you go. So that, you know, that, that's a perfect example. I, I have a feeling next year we'll see a lot more. You yeah. know, Maker Faire next year, we'll see lots of projects using the compute yeah. module. I mean, Personally, I'm very excited to see what yeah. you know the smaller guys do with this. You know, that the, the you know we know there's some big customers interested in this, but you know sure. what are the makers going to do with that? That's what's going to excite me, I think. Great, James. Thank you so much for being here. It's been um, a pleasure. You'll be around, right? If you have people have questions, yeah, okay. I'll be around today. Great. Great, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thanks so much.